This is uh, Megan with Chicago Tribune. Um, can you maybe just to start, take us through what the free agent process was like for you um, this off season and, and the Cubs involvement through that? Yeah. Yeah. It's uh, it was a crazy process. Um, you know, I had the opportunity to just talk to a lot of teams and, you know, I left free agency thinking the game of baseball is in great hands. There's a lot of great people running front offices and a lot of really smart people. Um, but as far as the Cubs go, you know, they expressed interest from the very beginning, really genuine interest. Um, you know, I got to meet with Craig Breslow in person and just talk pitching and, you know, we talked for like over two hours, just literally talking back and forth about pitching and, you know, the Cubs view and the direction and the pitching department. And I left that meeting feeling like, you know, this could be a really great fit. Um, you know, I was super impressed by everything they were doing and, um, you know, it felt like a great fit. They sent me some really cool custom videos that were personalized to me and my family and stuff. Um, so, you know, the interest was there. They stayed in touch the entire time. And I'm really happy we can make something work. Jameson. Hey, Jameson, it's Jordan Bastion from MLB.com. What, what was kind of the vision that the Cubs laid out for you for this season and the next couple of years over the life of your contract? And what was your own takeaway from kind of researching the players they have right now and going forward? Yeah, I was going to say, I did a little bit of my own research. And, you know, I think from the pitching side, there's a lot to be excited about. You know, I think they saw some steps forward from a lot of different guys. Um, you know, I, I'm impressed with a lot of the arms. Um, you have a nice mix of some established guys that have done it for a while. And you've got some younger guys that are trying to establish themselves in the league. Um, so just some exciting things there. And then from the defensive side, um, you know, I think they've got some guys that can definitely play solid defense. And obviously, you know, with Bellinger and Dansby coming on board, it seems like they're going to take a big step forward there, even defensively. And with the limit and shifts and stuff, I think that's really important. So that excited me. Um, I've heard really, really great things about working with Jan Gomes um, from the catching side. Um, so, you know, we talked about all of that. We talked about the finish to the season and how a lot of guys took steps, uh, steps forward in the second half. Um, you know, and that's something I, I'm excited to be a part of. Hey, James, Maddie Lee from the Sun Times. Congrats. Uh, did you speak to Rizzo or Efros or any other players who had, you know, experience here before making your decision? I did. Yeah. Yeah. I talked to Rizzo a little bit. I talked to Efros a pretty good amount. Uh, I talked to Trevor Williams, who was only there for half of a season, but, you know, I heard some really great things. I heard, you know, specifically I was asking guys a lot about the, just the pitching side and the pitching department. Um, I heard great things about Tommy and Moscos who used to be with the Yankees. Um, I heard really great things about the, the app that the Cubs have built out uh, Ivy and, all of that. So it seems like a really great fit. And all the feedback I got was like, dude, if you have the opportunity to play there, you, you really have to take it. And, uh, you know, like Efros and Trevor Williams would text me and be like, are you a Cub yet? It's going to be such a great fit and stuff. Hey, J Jameson, just following up on what Jordan asked you, this, this is Gordon Whitmire with NBC Sports Chicago. Um, when, when the Cubs laid out their vision for you, you, uh, I mean, there are a couple signings since you came aboard did they tell you what was coming? Did they tell you that they were going to get one of those shortstops? And did that matter to you that, you know, knowing who might be coming and playing behind you? Yeah, I didn't know exactly, you know, what they had their hands in. Um, but they did say that they were looking to spend and improve the team, um, which is obviously exciting on any team you're on. You always want to see them try to get better. Um, but, you know, even regardless of that, like, I really hit it off with, with everyone I talked to and heard great things. And I thought it was going to be a great fit regardless. And then now that I've come on board and seen, you know, some of the other signings and stuff, it's definitely really exciting. Hey, Jameson, Zahadev Sharma with the athletic. Uh, you're, you're a different pitcher than you were with the pirates, uh, more four seam usage, the introduction of a cutter. I'm just curious uh, what went into the changes while you were with the Yankees and kind of what, what are you looking to do while we're, Working with the Cubs pitching infrastructure? Yeah. So whenever I had my second Tommy John in 2019, I did make some mechanical changes. And once I did that, like I just naturally got a lot more carry on the four seam. Uh, the slider changed shape a little bit. The two seam maybe took a tiny step back in, in terms of like profile and movement. Um, so definitely the pitch mix did change. 
uh, the slider cutter mix kind of started as one pitch blended together that I would manipulate. And then this year I just decided to make them two separate pitches. Um, so I've, I've added pitches. I feel like I command the ball a little better than when I was younger. Um, you know, trying to limit free passes again, especially with the limit and the shift. I think that's going to be really important. Just not letting guys get on, um, you know, in terms of a free pass. So the pitch mix has changed. I still think there's, some pitch usage things that I could get, you know, some, some optimized pitch usage stuff. I think I could throw the curveball a little more. Um, I think, you know, full off season with the cutter, I think that's something I, I might look to throw a little bit more. Um, so, you know, I still think in terms of the pitch mix, I could definitely optimize some things and, and get a little bit better. Um, I feel like I still have some untapped potential that I'm really trying to hunt down. And, and I felt like this was a great fit to help me find that. Hey, Jamison, this is uh, Ryan Herrera with CHGO. Um, during your time with the Pirates, I know you went through a few health issues, but you did get a few chances to pitch at Wrigley Field. Um, what was your experience in those, uh, getting to pitch there? And just kind of, does that excite you? Like, what are you looking forward to um, getting down there yeah. the first time as a Cub? Yeah, so one of my first road trips was to Chicago when I was with Pittsburgh. And we I think it was a Friday day game with Arietta on the mound when he was untouchable and I remember just like taking a step back and feeling the environment. Um, there's nothing better than a day game at Wrigley in the summer. Um, you know, I remember thinking at the time, I'm like, this is the big leagues right here. This is the show. Um, so to have an opportunity to call that like my home field and the home fans and stuff is super exciting. Um, you know, I've had a couple of good games there. And I've had some bad games there and playing against the Cubs when they were really good. And the place was absolutely rocking. It was a really, really cool environment. So excited to be a part of it. Hopefully we can bring, um, you know, a, a winning team to Wrigley. So when I was there from 16 through 19, uh, it was a crazy place to play. Hey, Jameson, Andy Martinez from Marquee Sports Network. Kind of going back to Sahadu's question on the pitch uses, is that something that you also talked about with Craig Breslow and some some of the stuff that you, you're you beginning to figure out what you guys maybe want to do going into the season? Yeah. Yeah. So he showed me kind of like a slideshow of some, some things that he would maybe look at. Um, and then, you know, just the other day I had a call with the whole pitching department analysts, all that um, they're building out like a throwing program for me right now. They're taking a look at all my plyo ball throws and uh, you know, they're extremely thorough and they're going to come up with a great program for me that I'm really excited about. But we did talk a little bit about the pitch usage stuff. And I think that's something when, when spring training comes uh, comes around we'll probably revisit and talk a little bit more about but just early on I think it was like trust the curveball that was one of my best performing pitches let's throw that um, and then from my perspective too if I could find a way to kind of bag up like my best version of my slider and my best version of my cutter like how can we limit the variability in those pitches like how can we just make my slider the best pitch every single time and not have the shape kind of change from outing to outing and stuff that's something that I'm really interested in, in hammering down. Um, but I think just early on, I'll probably look to throw the curveball a little more, the cutter a little bit more, and then just really lock in the pitch shapes. Jameson, uh, Bruce Levine, welcome to Chicago. Congratulations. I'm wondering, uh, you know, after watching Verlander come back from Tommy John and, you know, be as superlative as he has and you being able to throw a, a lot of innings, where you feel you're at arm strength wise and ability wise after the Tommy John and, and throwing a lot of innings this year. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, what he did was incredible. He's kind of a unicorn, but um, I feel great. I feel healthy. Um, I feel like after I had my second elbow surgery, it kind of gave me a new lease on baseball and my career. And I took the opportunity to find out what I was doing wrong and find out why I was getting hurt. Um, so I kind of went back to the drawing board and reimagined what my delivery would look like and, what type of pitcher I wanted to be and how I could stay on the field. And I feel like I've gotten more comfortable the more I've been out there with who I want to be and who I'm going to be going forward. Um, but the delivery is in a pretty good spot, always looking to improve it. I'm always curious about learning and uh, you know, how I can get better out there, but you know, knock on wood um, you know, since that second elbow surgery, I've never missed a bullpen, never missed a day of throwing. I don't have to take anti-inflammatories to make it to my next start. Um, you know, I don't feel like I'm in that survival mode anymore. I feel like I'm fully healthy. I was kind of gifted a new lease on baseball. And, um, you know, I think a lot of the mechanical changes I've made have really helped me uh, take pressure off the arm. So that's something I take pride in now is taking the ball every time and, and going as deep as I can.
as a follow-up, uh, do you think 200 innings are realistic in this day and age again for pitchers, or is that an outlier? I think it's, I think it's definitely realistic. Um, you know, I think innings are kind of making, making our way back again. Um, you know, I think the less times you can expose bullpen arms to teams, especially like within the division teams and see a lot, I think the better I can help those guys pitch. Um, you know, you don't want your high leverage arms seeing the middle of the order every time. If I can get through that third time through and save those guys an extra time um, here and there, that's huge. Um, and, you know, this year, I think a lot more guys could have hit 200 innings. Um, but early in the year, we were all working on pitch counts and stuff because of the lockout. Um, so, you know, in the month of April, I know with the Yankees, like most of us were throwing 75 pitches every time. So, um, you know, I think, I think guys could have increased their innings by like 10 to 15. So I definitely think it's doable. Um, and I think now more than ever, it's important to throw innings and help the bullpen. They have limits on how many pitchers you can have out there and stuff. So just the more we can help those guys. Hey, Jameson, this is uh, Tim Stebbins with NBC Sports Chicago. Bit of an off-the-beat question, but the word out there on you is you're a big coffee guy. Have, have you had a chance to catch a clean half? And if so, what have those conversations been like? Yeah, yeah, I'm a big coffee guy in New York. I had a pour-over set up in our head clubby's office, and I would go in there and, and whip it up for the team uh, whenever they needed a little caffeine jolt. So something I've gotten really into. And actually, uh, you know, before playing in Chicago, was ever even a thought of mine. Ian Happ sent me a little care package to spring training this past year of, of his coffee. Um, it's really, really good stuff. So I'm hoping we, we get some more access to that. And, in turn, I'll, I'll brew them up some pour overs to pay them back. But yeah, especially with all the day games we'll be playing in Chicago, I'm, I'm sure I'll have a setup hidden somewhere in, in the locker room. Jamison, um, back to the free agent process. Um, you mentioned the Cubs were, were sincere from the beginning. I imagine most teams appear sincere, but do some sort of stand out than others? And is it all similar pitches? Are they all very different? Can you can you kind of go through that process and and how did the Cubs stand out in, in you know specifically? Yeah, um, you know overall it's like you're talking to usually a manager or you know a couple front office members. So in that term, it's kind of similar, but every team has a little bit different of a pitch. And for the Cubs, it was definitely genuine. They sent me custom videos that no other team sent me kind of selling me on the Wrigley experience and the history and the city and the fans. Um, that stood out to me. I loved the videos so much. I was watching them like every day there at the beginning for a couple of weeks. Um, so that kind of kept it fresh in my mind. Um, the Cubs were actually the only team who went out of their way to meet with me in person. So that went a long way for me. Um, you know, just to be able to sit down and have the conversation face to face was definitely really nice. Um, and like I said, me and Breslow just sat there and talked for over two hours, which, you know, I think we were probably planning on like a 30 minute meeting and we got kind of nerding out on pitching there and we just kept going and going. So um, that stood out to me, just how easy it felt. You know, everyone I talked to, it just felt easy. It felt right. Um, but, you know, I was impressed with every team for sure. But the Cubs felt felt genuine in that regard that they reached out early. They reached out often. Um, you know, the video stood out. That was something no other team did. And then just making the effort to, to be there in person was big. Jameson, have you had a chance to talk to any uh, current members on the team? And if so, like, what have those interactions kind of been like? Yeah, I've talked to a few guys. Um, I made sure to reach out to Jan. And I've talked to Hendricks a little bit. I've talked to Hap. Uh, I've talked to Rossi, Tommy Hadovy. Um, So I've been trying my best to to talk to everybody and, and hear from everyone. Uh, you know, I talked to Dansby a little bit. Um, so the commu commu <clears throat> communication has been great. Everyone seems super nice, super excited. Um, you know, when I was in Chicago, I met a lot of people. I met Keegan Thompson there. Um, so it seems like a great group. Um, and obviously coming to a new organization is a lot, just trying to learn names and figure out what everyone's like. But I'll be excited to get going in spring training. Jameson, just wanted to quickly clarify, uh, did the, the mechanical changes, you said you worked on that on your own. Was that with uh, just simply on your own or did with the Yankees helping? Was that while you were still with the Pirates? That was while I was still with the Pirates. Um, I kind of figured like second Tommy John surgery, I was going to have a longer layoff. So I really went back to the drawing board. I worked with uh, the guys at the Florida Baseball Ranch. They gave me a ton of drills. I was sending videos to them throughout my whole rehab and then I kind of laid out the vision that I had to the Pirates guys and what I was thinking. And those pitching coaches, Justin Message and Oscar Marine really helped me a lot. And, uh, 
you know, they've always been on, on my team and, you know, they helped me get back and, um, you know, it even went as far as like my off season strength coaches. I said, I really want to train my lower body to look like this and move a certain way. And so it took a lot of different people to make it happen. Um, and then once I got to the Yankees, it was like, I had kind of told them, Hey, here's what my vision is. Here's what I'm trying to do. I hadn't pitched competitively in over two years. So, um, you know, it took a lot of people to make it happen and, you know, it's always evolving, but I'm pretty happy with where it ended up. You had a chance, obviously, to face the Cubs in June, and obviously that team and roster looked a little different by the end of the season and even now. But, you know, in doing that homework that you mentioned on the Cubs, what just stood out to you um, if you looked at the pitching staff or the roster as you went through your own process and evaluating, you know, whether you felt like maybe competitively this was the right fit for you? Yeah. Um, I remember Ian Happ hit a pretty far homer off me that day. Um, but you know, like you said, the roster is definitely different. Um, I don't think Stroman was healthy at the time. Um, I don't think Hendricks pitched. So the roster has, has changed, but, uh, yeah, I mean, I'm excited about a lot of the arms. I'm excited about pitching with Keegan Thompson and Justin Steele, some guys that maybe the rest of the league, uh, might not know quite yet, or that's not like a household name, but I think, you know, they really established themselves there in the second half, um, you know, I got to meet Bellinger when I was in Chicago doing my physical, really excited to have him behind me. Um, you know, I think it's a solid roster. And I think, you know, from the Cubs point of view, I think it's a, a division that if you pour into the, the right guys and, and create the right roster, the division should be, you know, I don't want to say up for grabs. You know, we have to go out there and prove it, but it's a division that's gettable. Um, so, you know, I'm happy that they're adding to it. And I think it's a group that can make some noise. A Yankee official <clears throat> said that uh, when I asked about you when they were talking, you know, your name came up, <clears throat> said, terrific guy, great teammate, outstanding for the Cubs, will make them better. Um, talk about being a teammate and uh, hearing that, how, how essential that is for you. Yeah, so that's something I'm, I'm really excited about coming over to the Cubs, too, is that they do have some young guys who are establishing, establishing themselves in the big leagues. Um, I like kind of just playing the leadership role. I like talking to young guys. I like watching guys throw bullpens. I like helping guys prepare for their starts. I love talking mechanics. I'm always in the weight room nerding out on pitching or lifting or, you know, watching guys throw their plyo balls. Um, that's something I'm really excited about. Maybe take young guys out to dinner, maybe just in spring training, go out of my way to watch guys throw their live BPs and stuff. So you know, there's a lot of ways to make a team better on the field, but there's also a lot of ways off the field to help guys. And, you know, that's something I take pride in. I think I probably learned that as I was unfortunately a rehab guy there for a while. It's like, you know, I'm making this money to be a big league baseball player. I can't affect the team on the field. What can I do off the field? Can I help guys with their scouting reports? Can I be vocal in, in pitchers meetings? Um, can I communicate with them in between innings in the dugout? Um, so it's just something as a professional, you kind of learn over time how to interact. And I'm really excited to, to join a team that's got some young guys that I can hopefully help if they ever need anything or just, you know, be their number one fan and root for them. Um, but really excited to just pour into the team and the club. Was your meeting at Wrigley with the Cubs? It was actually in New York where I was living at the time. Um, so yeah, got to go to Wrigley for my physical process and see all the facilities and stuff, but they came to me in New York. Hey, Jameson, this is a uh, Patrick Mooney for the athletic. I was curious. You're talking about your first impressions of Wrigley back in 2016, like the addition of someone like Dansby Swanson, like how does that accelerate a process towards getting back to where the Cubs were uh, several years ago? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, he's a really good player. He had a great season. Um, and from everything I've heard uh, off the field, in the clubhouse, in the locker room, he's going to make people better. Um, you know, I've heard he holds people accountable. I've heard he really wants to win. I don't think he would have picked Chicago or gone to Chicago if he wasn't convinced that we could build a winner and get back to that level. So really excited to see what he's all about. I've heard great things. I've heard he's super competitive. He's got a edge and a, a desire to win. Um, so, yeah, I mean, Again, playing there in 16, 17, 18, 19, like there's no place better when it's rocking and it's really hard to play there as a visiting player. Um, so I'm excited to, to hopefully get to experience that firsthand. 
Jameson, you mentioned you had talked to Dansby. Was that before he signed or was that afterwards? And it, it just where were you and how did you find out and just what was your reaction initially? Yes, yeah, so we have. Well, I was actually at Jordan Montgomery's wedding uh, and we had our phones locked up, so I wasn't able to, to see what was going on. So I got my phone back and had a lot of people texting me that he had agreed to terms. Um, we have the same agency, so I got his number and reached out and, um, you know, he seems really excited. Um, and, you know, hopefully we'll get to go out there and take the field and compete together. Um, you know, he, see, he told me he's going to be calling all the guys. and That already right there told me what he's all about. Um, definitely some leadership qualities, and I'm excited to play with him. James, I just want to be uh, sure. When, with your in-person meeting, who all was there? It was just Breslow that day. Um, and I think it was honestly perfect the way it was, just because we could sit there for a couple hours and just talk pitching and kind of riff off each other and go back and forth. And then Ballinger was right before you, and you talked about how excited you are to have him playing behind him. Did that play into your decision making process at all, or was it just a, a nice coincidence? I think that was that was a nice coincidence. I had seen like on Twitter that he was maybe a possibility for the Cubs, which was exciting. Um, but yeah, we kind of agreed around the same time, and we were actually in Chicago doing our physical together. Seems like an awesome dude. Um, but yeah, that was just a happy coincidence that we agreed. Uh, kind of back to back there we saw you post the photo and you're wearing the cubs hat was there a cubs link as a kid or was that just one of many yeah i think i think i did play on a cubs little league team at the time um but i actually grew up an astros fan and the astros played the cubs in the nl central back in the day and i was always watching wgn as a kid uh, i'd come home from school and watch those games um, but there are some Chicago connections that I have. My mom went to Northwestern. My dad's first job out of college was in Chicago. My brother was born there. My girlfriend lived in Barrington for four years. So uh, a lot of connections, a lot of people that are really excited to see me go there. Just a quick one. Uh, what was it like playing with Rizzo? And, uh, you know, we, we all know him so well and his history here. Uh, what, what did he directly say about Wrigley and Chicago for you? Yeah, no, he told me they were interested in me. I guess he had heard from some of his Cubs sources and he said I would love it there if I ever had any questions to kind of run it by him. Um, but he had great things to say. Obviously, he means a lot still to the Cubs organization and what they were able to accomplish when he was there. Great teammate. Um, you know, I loved having him play behind me as a first baseman. Every time I'd make a good pitch, he would have words of encouragement on the field, which not many other big league guys do. You know, he'd just give me a, that a baby, which I really came to love every time I, I got that feedback. Um, but yeah, plays hard, shows up, prepares the right way. Really enjoyed getting to share the field with him. He actually maybe don't look it up, but he probably has the best career numbers against me of any hitter. Um, so I was happy to have him on my team. All right. Well, thank you, Jameson. I really appreciate it. Thanks for your time. Thanks, everyone. Yeah, nice, nice to meet, meet everybody. Looking forward to seeing you all in person.